The following program is from NET, the Public Television Network. Quetzal Quadal Entertainment presents Quinlan's Animation Extravaganza, Episode 115, Movie Time. To Animation Land. As you can see, I've just sent my manuscript for Chapter 23 of Humor to Sensei Go Ranger to Shueisha. Oh, I've just realized, Miyako and I have tickets to Disney's Fantasia and are scheduled in 30 minutes. I better get to the Animation Cinema. Come on! Phew! I made it! Only 15 minutes to spare! Now, where's Miyako? What the churn? Oh, there you are! You ready to see the movie? You bet I am! Besides, I just found a completely uncensored version of the movie! Well, the theater says that they're showing the uncensored version, so let's get snacks and go sit down. This is the life! Now we can live like it's 1940! Or at least that's hope, because it might not have Deems Taylor's actual voice. Alright, that TV imprint! Oh, the movie's starting! Let's enjoy! Audio duel? Uh, my name is Deems Taylor, and it's my pleasant duty to welcome you here on behalf of Walt Disney, Leopold Stokowski, and all the other artists and musicians whose combined talents went into the creation of this new form of entertainment, Fantasia. Wow, it does have Team Taylor's actual voice! They probably found it on the 1991 VHS tape. So far, so good. Now, there are three kinds of music on this Fantasia program. First is the kind that tells a definite story. Then is the kind that, while it has no specific plot, does paint a series of more or less definite pictures. Then there's a third kind, music that exists simply for its own sake. Oh yeah, bring on the Takata and Feud! That's one of your favorites, isn't it? Oh yeah, I love its scary and dramatic mood. You know it's funny how wrong an artist can be about his own work. Now the one composition of Tchaikovsky's that he really detested was his Nutcracker Suite, which is probably the most popular thing he ever wrote. Incidentally, uh, you won't see any Nutcracker on the screen. There's nothing left of him in the title. Oh, that's right, you're training ballet. I forgot about that. I do it for you, funny job. And now we're going to hear a piece of music that tells a very definite story. It's a very old story, one that goes back almost 2,000 years. A legend about a sorcerer who had an apprentice. He was a bright young lad, very anxious to learn the business. As a matter of fact, he was a little bit too bright, because he started practicing some of the boss's best magic tricks before learning how to control them. Boom, okay, boom. this segment is probably the most famous one in the entire movie. Wow, they even included the ending conversation between Mickey and Stokowski. Good thing that part still survives. When Igor Stravinsky wrote his ballet, The Ride of Spring, his purpose was, in his own words, to express primitive life. And so Walt Disney and his fellow artists have taken him at his word. Instead of presenting the ballet in its original form as a simple series of tribal dances, they visualize it as a pageant, as a story of the growth of life on Earth. The Rhyme of Spring! Wasn't that the ballet that sparked controversy when it was first performed? Yeah, probably due to the music. They were so used to the total format of music that they have completely review-bombed every composition that was different. <laughs> Before we get into the second half of the program, I'd like to introduce somebody to you. Somebody who is very important to Fantasia. Wow, the soundtrack looked like it's the basis for our audio editing software today! Yeah, looks very similar. The symphony that Beethoven called the Pastoral, his sixth, is one of the few pieces of music he ever wrote that tells something like a definite story. He was a great nature lover, 
and in this symphony, he paints a musical picture of his day in the country. Now, of course, the country that Beethoven described was the countryside with which he was familiar. But his music covers a much wider field than that, and so Walt Disney is given the pastoral symphony a mythological setting. Wow, they include all five movements of the symphony, although they're shortened. Yes, they it's uncensored! Now we're going to do one of the most famous and popular ballets ever written. The Dance of the Hours from Ponchielli's opera La Gioconda. It's a pageant of the hours of the day. All this takes place in the Great Hall, with its garden beyond, of the palace of Duke Alviza, a Venetian nobleman. So beautiful! I just want to twirl along with them! <laughs> Oh, Miyako. The last number on our Fantasia program is a combination of two pieces of music so utterly different in both construction and mood that they set each other off perfectly. The first is A Night on Bold Mountain by one of Russia's greatest composers, Modest Mussorgsky. The second is Franz Schubert's immortal Ave Maria. Musically and dramatically, we have here a picture of the struggle between the profane and the sacred. Oh, here it comes! My favorite segment in the entire movie! Oh, God! German looks really terrifying! That was such a great movie, Fortune John! Thanks for taking me! Oh, well, no problem. Oh, keep in mind, we need to save Mamoru Chiba from the Dark Kingdom. Don't worry, I am forgotten! Bye bye! Wow, that was a magnificent experience! Thanks for coming to see the movie with Miyako and me. Stop by whenever the Dark Kingdom attacks again, okay? Alright. See you later. This episode was an original story created entirely for this show, written by Quentin Cole, copyright 2019. This program is a production of Quetzalcoatl Entertainment. Television Network.